Problems for Doron and his pet. Well, it's a great pleasure to be here. I've known Doron initially by email when he was at the Institute for Hard by Snail Mail, actually, before email. Uh, when he was visiting at the Institute for Advanced Study, and then when he was at Urbana one summer, he came up and gave a talk in a seminar. Uh, and we run across each other many, many times. We don't always agree on everything. <laughs> and I thought it might be appropriate to start my talk on some geometry. <laughs> that I sometimes, I've been spending a lot of time on education. And one thing I, and this is how I got into geometry, by the way, because that's what's fallen apart in our school system. I sometimes ask uh, people I'm talking to in education to close their eyes, and then I ask a question and ask them to raise their hand. I'm not going to ask you to close your eyes, but I'm going to start with Ptolemy's theorem. How many of you know the statement of Ptolemy's theorem? It's not bad. <laughs> Once in Wisconsin, I asked uh, a group of teachers and uh, college teachers to and first to close their eyes, and how many of them knew how to prove that the medians of a triangle met, met at a point? And one out of 31 did. These were high school teachers. <laughs> so it gives you some idea of the problems that we have. Well, <clears throat> Ptolemy's theorem is where trigonometry starts, and that's one of the reasons that I'm interested in it. For the Greeks, trigonometry was chords and circles rather than triangles. And in his great book on astronomy, Ptolemy has to construct tables of chords. And they knew how to do this for certain angles, central angles. Uh, they could, 60 degrees, of course, 72 degrees because they can con construct a regular pentagon. And then they knew how to cut angles in half. You just need the Pythagorean theorem for that, but then you wanted to add things back together. And that's what Ptolemy's theorem did. But he pulled it out of the air. It didn't give you any motivation. I can motivate it, but I'm going to start off with a different type of motivation and we'll derive Ptolemy's theorem. <clears throat> Triangles are rigid. And this is how you like to show elementary students, but quadrilaterals are not. But there is one class of quadrilaterals that are rigid. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I really read Doran's uh, rules for talking. He said, put laptops away. <laughs> He didn't mean for the speakers, but I take him better. Yeah. I did mean, but I didn't say it. <laughs> now, this configuration is rigid. When you're given the sides A, B, C, D, and there is a circle that passes through that triangle, and you can actually show that there's a, one circle that will do this uh, when you arrange the, the sides appropriately, A, B, C, D, and then you can skew the thing so that this angle plus this angle is 180 degrees, and then you can circumscribe a circle around it. Since it's rigid, the diagonal is determined. Let's call this angle A and this C. And we get x squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine a. It's also c squared plus d squared minus 2cd cosine c. But a plus c is pi and cosine of pi minus a is then the cosine of, well, 
cosine of C is cosine of pi minus A, which is minus the cosine of A. So we can put a plus sign there and make that an A. And then we can get rid of that term. You get AB plus CD times X squared. The CD times A squared plus B squared plus AB times C squared plus D squared. Now, it's not too hard to teach students skills. It's very hard to teach them taste. I don't know how to do it, other than to illustrate. Uh, I described the book that Schoenberg wrote on mathematical time exposures as a book illustrating mathematical taste. Needless to say, it has never sold well. <laughs> it's still a beautiful book. But the left-hand side is pretty, the right-hand side is ugly. It's got squares and it's got linear terms. And we can make it look a little prettier if we take the squares and put them with the linear factors. And then we take the terms that involve AC and BD, and that all gets multiplied by AD plus BC. I'll skip the one step I would put in there with students. And now it's an attractive formula. And you have X squared is AC plus BD, AD plus BC over AB plus CD. And by symmetry, you get y squared. Oh, this one's got a little more ink. Is AC plus BD times AB plus CD over AD plus BC. And Ptolemy's theorem comes when you multiply the two of them together. You get x squared, y squared. Another one of these things. That's yeah, you have the better ones on the other side. Thanks. You've got x squared, y squared is ac plus bd squared. And taking the square root, you get Ptolemy's theorem. The product of the diagonals of a cyclic quadrilateral is the sum of the products of the opposite side. You can also divide them. You get x squared over y squared. Well, it turns out to be AD plus BC over AB plus CD squared. And this is a, a strange formula. For a number of years, I knew no applications of it. And I thought, gee, that actually shows the the good common sense of the mathematical community. Because Ptolemy's theorem has a lot of applications. This is where trigonometry starts, and I'll rewrite Ptolemy's theorem in trigonometric form so that you can begin to recognize what's contained in it. Uh, but this result gets forgotten and then rediscovered. Um, there was a spate on the web where people did this, and there's a paper by Shalash uh, doing this uh, in the usual form, uh, just a computer program and boom. Uh, there's a book on papers on geometry that was collected by some English, and they got uh, a few original papers that were written for it. Uh, one on desert, oh, a series on desert island theorems, uh, and one was on Ptolemy's theorem. And this was done there, and they said that there was a, a proof of this in uh, Mathematical Gazette a few years before, but it's older than that. It goes back to Cayley in the 19th century. Well, it's done by Euler also, 100 years earlier than that. But in fact, 
everything that I've done so far here is in.